Welcome in everyone. The big game of the night as Kirksville looked to go 3-0 as they took on Moberly. Kirksville with the ball here and Craig, Craig, excuse me, Mitch Craig has it looks left and the ball is intercepted. That led to a Braves field goal. Braves would score on the next possession of the quarterback sneak two-point conversion. Braves 11 to nothing. A bright spot here though for the Tigers. Braves running back goes to the right. Nice game but loses the ball. Jonathan Bros picks up the fumble. Big play there for the Tigers, but the momentum was short-lived because next play, Scott Swin would get the ball, he would go right, but he would fumble, giving the ball back to the Braves. That led to this. Braves' Joe Kaliski, he would head to the left, and he would get in to score for the touchdown. A failed PAT makes the score 17 to nothing. Tough time for the Tigers. Late first, Tigers get their first first down in the, in the game due to a pass interference call. The drive would stall though. Kirksville falls as Moberly wins 31 to nothing. Atomo hosted old Metro rival Des Moines East tonight, and East quarterback Xavier James was the player to watch. But Titus Weller gets the sack here, contains James. James with nine touchdowns on the year, entering into this game. He gets his 10th right here. Passes to Abu Sama. Sama into the end zone. Des Moines East would control this game in the first half. Seth Griffiths trying to spark some energy into the Atoma team. He takes it all the way inside the red zone, but Atoma could only get a field goal out of it. It's 26-3 at halftime. Atoma came all the way back, tied it at 26, but right now with four minutes left, East is up 40-26. to Now let's head down to Marceline as they took on Brookfield in the big bell game. And Marceline opt to kick off and oh, those tricky Tigers. An onside kick. It hits a Brookfield player as the Tigers recover the ball. And why not? Kyle Bell, he would get the offense started with moving the ball here with a nice gain here to the left. A few plays later, Bell would get the ball again. He would move the Tigers into the, into the red zone. But the Brookfield D held tough. Quarterback Blake Lineball, his pass would come up short. Bulldogs ball. Then when the Brookfield gets the ball, Colin Thudham, he would go left for a field. It was tied at half, but Brookfield went on to win 20 to nothing. Fairfield trying to get in the win column against Washington tonight. They've had a couple close games. On defense, the Trojans coming up big, recovering the Demons fumble deep within Fairfield territory. Then Dylan Fry leading the offense for the Trojans. Fry the senior connects with Spencer Peterman here. And Fairfield trying to get that offense going, they did. This would lead to later. Fry looking for Justin Hammes, he finds him. Hammes takes it into the end zone. Fairfield goes up 6-0, but Fairfield loses another heartbreaker, 14-13. Three games they've lost this year by a combined nine points. Let's head to Queen City. It was the home opener for Schuyler County as the Rams hosted Salisbury. Schuyler County in Maroon. The Rams have trouble on the pitch. Salisbury would recover the bouncing football. The visitors would take advantage of the mistake. Jake Lottamandir ran them down the field. Big number 44 would score. That would make it 7 to nothing. After that, the Rams' defense came up big. Austin Ridgeway was the first of five Rams on the stop. Later, they get great field position on the high snap on the kick. But you know what? The Rams could not take advantage of that and other opportunities tonight. Salisbury would go on to win it 37 to nothing. Davis County was looking to extend their undefeated record against I-35 tonight. The Mustangs 2-0, they've looked really strong so far this season, a good rushing attack. Also, an opportunistic defense snap goes over the head of the I-35 quarterback. Matt Chilton recovers the fumble. However, Davis County will give it right back. Calvin Utt will fumble here, and Sal Arzani recovers for the Roadrunners. It was a back-and-forth game, kind of sloppy in the beginning, but later on, Alex Middleton would burst up the middle for I-35. Gets in the end zone, they would miss the extra point. Mustangs answer, Colton Roberts burst outside, uses his speed to get in the end zone. 7-6 Davis County, Mustangs go on to win 47-28. Let's see if home cooking would help Scotland County against South Callaway. 
Scotland County in blue, the Tigers' Will McRobert matriculates his way downfield for the first down. Check out the great blocking by the line. Here comes McRobert again. Folks, he's only a freshman. Great gain, great night. Guess who scored the touchdown? Yes, it's number 34 for Scotland County. South Callaway asked Rudolph to guide their running game tonight. Anyway, South Callaway wins it 63-20. to Cardinal was looking to eclipse last year's win total against new district rival EBF. Cardinal fourth down on defense rockets. Trevor Swartz finds Drake Menus in the end zone. Menus was all over the field on offense and defense. Cardinal struggling on offense early on, but Neil Hurtado breaks it open for the big gain. I almost got run over, but it was all good. Got a good shot out of it. Later on, check out this catch by Brandon Potts. The Cardinal sophomore skies high for the completion. Cardinal only down 14-6 at half. They would lose 48-13 to to EBF. Safety first, Johnny. And finally, it's perennial power Macon against Monroe City. Macon in black. Craig Smith rolls out. He finds Brendan Watts for the big first down. Well, I don't know what happened there. Gremlins would get in there, but you know what? The Macon Tigers aired it out all night tonight. That pair that we just told you about, Smith and Watts, combined for a 35-yard touchdown pass late in the second quarter, and they rolled right after that. As Macon gets the win in front of the home folks at Hudon Field, the final tonight was 21-3. Now let's check out the rest of the scores. Nonprofit mission of Megan Diversified Industries.